the BSA Gold Star made selective use of racing bike technology to massively increase the speed of the bike without a massive price tag. Most importantly for a high-speed bike, it had a great power-to-weight ratio. This bike looks light, and it is. On the power side, it had a single-cylinder 500cc engine, which was still pretty standard for road bikes at the time. But 48 horsepower in such a light bike was more than a match for heavier bikes with more power. But ironically, the BSA Gold Star was most loved not for its top speed, but for its sports car-like acceleration. This bike's biggest secret weapon was inside its gearbox. And this was it, a very large first gear. Using that superb power-to-weight ratio, this bike could get you moving and up steep hills using sheer grunt rather than a smaller first gear. Instead, this big one gets you all the way to 60 miles an hour. So let's see how tall this legendary first gear is, shall we? Off we go. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour. And change, what a feeling. Superb. While bikers everywhere were pushing the Goldie to do the ton, an extraordinary single-cylinder racing bike was paving the way for a whole new era of road bikes that would bring millions of new disciples to the altar of two-wheel speed. I'm standing here on the mountain section of the TT course, a race that from the 1920s was dominated by a single mark of machine for three decades, an evolving series of single-cylinder machines that became known as the Manx Nortons. Through years of technical evolution and racing dominance, they simply transformed what it means to be a motorcyclist. The Manx Nortons were designed specifically for the TT race and shared their name with the Manx Cat, which is unique to the Isle of Man. Norton was another British company that began as a 19th century bicycle manufacturer under the leadership of James Lansdowne Norton. Norton's racing success brought phenomenal sales of production road bikes, making it, for a time, one of the world's most powerful bike manufacturers. By the late 1940s, racing had become so important to commercial success that North dedicated their top engineers and facilities to the racing team. They produced purpose-built racing bikes like this 140 mile an hour Manx Norton, arguably the most successful all-rounder at the Manx TT ever. Norton's success was down to their single-cylinder engines generating more power than their rivals. But when other manufacturers started developing new, more powerful multi-cylinder engines, the Manx Norton's evolution took a new direction. Handling! After all, massive speed and power are no good if you can't keep the thing on the road. The more powerful motorcycle engines became, the more they started to shake and wobble in their overgrown bicycle frame. Racers complained that the whole frame flexed in high-speed corners and over bumps. So, the success of this new breed of Manx Norton lay not so much in its engine power, but in a brilliant piece of design from Norton engineer and team racer, Irishman Rex McCandless. The secret to this bike's success was this groundbreaking piece of steel tubing. Now, the most important feature of this frame are these two tubes acting like a double chassis running down here, under the bike's engine, the bike's heaviest component, maximizing rigidity. Brilliantly simple, this double chassis gives maximum rigidity for minimum weight. Compared to the traditional approach seen here of thick tubular steel and heavy iron lugs to weld it all together, which produced a heavy frame, that Norton's team leader came up with the famous name for Rex's brilliant invention when he rode the Manx for the first time. And its first year, 1950, proved to be the year of the featherbed at the Manx TT. Nine out of 11 of the top places were taken by Manx Nortons. It was a great era to be a bike racer, especially if you rode a Norton. But the rest of the biking community wanted a share of the action. Manufacturers' road bikes just weren't delivering the technology and thrills of their racing bikes. So motorcyclists took matters into their own hands. Literally. 
In nondescript garages and workshops around Britain, a revolution was beginning that would change biking forever. It would produce one of the greatest custom road bikes of all time, the Triton, which wasn't even made by an official manufacturer. It was built by individuals like ex-racer Dave Degens, who is still making Tritons today.